Hey what's up guys, back again with another video in the Java series. This episode we're going to teach you about type wrappers. So what are type wrappers? Well, they're a way to integrate uh, regular primitive data types into an object. So basically, you can convert a regular, you know, int integer into the integer object. So yeah, so type wrappers specifically though, are the classes that um, hold the primitive data types. So the data types they work with are the double, the float, the long integer, the short, the byte, the character, and the boolean. So basically, just to recap, it's literally just turning a regular primitive data type um, into an object. That's all it is. So why would you need to turn an int into an object, for example? Well, sometimes you need to pass an object into the method as a parameter, and you can't do that with regular primitive data types. So yeah. So also when we start using the advanced data structures in Java, when we do that, um, they can only take objects. They can't take primitive data types. So yeah, we would have to convert our primitive, da primitive data types into objects. So once we learn their type wrappers, we can expand on the concept by learning auto boxing, but yeah, I know there was a lot, but you know, let's just jump right into it and you'll see. So to convert a character into a character object, we have two options. We could do the old way by calling on the character class constructor, or we could do the modern method um, introduced in Java 9, which is done by calling on the value of method. So I'll show you both ways for each data type since Java 9 is kind of recent in a way. But uh, yeah, so yeah, let's go ahead and make a character object here. So we can make a, so we got to do character, like we would make a regular object, so character, and we can give it a random name. So we'll call it uh, char one equals. And so now we got to call upon the character uh, constructor. So um, we'll do new and then character, basically like we would do when we're making objects usually. And I'll show you what this strikeout thing means in a second. So we put new character, and then inside of here we put a char, any value. So we'll use C, and there, there we go. So now we have the value of C, the char C, as an object. So yeah. So if we were to print this out, for example, you would print out C. So let's try that. So we get C. So it's the same thing as a regular primitive, but it's an object. So it has more access to it has access to different methods and all kinds of cool stuff that we can use in the future. So yeah, so you might be wondering, what's this little error kind of thing? And then what's this uh, strikeout thing? Well, like I said, um, this was um, an old method that was used. This is how you don't do it anymore. So that's why it's struck out. That means it's deprecated, meaning it's old fashioned and you don't really need to use it anymore, but you can use it if you want to. And then this is the same, well, this is not the same thing. The orange part, the underline at least, the yellow, the yellow underline, that just means that you can, you don't need to actually tap all this out. You can use auto boxing, but don't worry, don't worry about that. We'll learn about that next episode. So yeah, this is how you convert a char into a char uh, object. So yep, that's how you do that. So th we're gonna learn the next method for doing it, the the modern method you could call it. So to do that, we could do character. Oh no, we'll just do it on this line. So character char one equals, and then we do ch character, and then we call on the value of method value of, and then we put the the carrot char in there. So likewise, we don't get a deprecated thing this time, but we still get the underlined thing because you can use auto boxing if you want to, but we're not going to do that. So yeah, so this is all perfectly valid Java, I mean Java um, code and yeah, so it works and that's how you do it. So if we were to print this out, it would do the same thing, it would work. So yeah, that's how you do that. So now we can do booleans if you want to also. So booleans, true or false, obviously. There's two ways to do it, actually three ways. Um, the old way, there's two ways for the old way and then one way for the new way. So for the old way, we have um, boolean and we give a name boolean one equals oops boolean one equals new boolean and then we inside of here we have two options. We could either do a regular boolean like a true or false, or we can do a string of the boolean. So let's try the regular boolean. So true. So yeah, now we have a boolean as a boolean object. So we can print this out if you want to also. So boolean one. Awesome, so we get true, and likewise we could do false if you want to. Boom. Okay, so the other way to do it is by using a string as the parameter, so we could do like true here, and then it should print out true. But if we have something else that's not true, or even false, so let's say we have false, it'll be false, but let's say we have false like, like that or something like that, or even true that. If it's not, if it's anything but true, that means it's just gonna be false automatically. Oops, I pressed the wrong button. Uh, yeah, I get all those errors. Oopsies, not errors, but yeah. So we get false. Um, so yeah, it has to be, it has to be true. And if it's anything but true, 
even false, it'll come out as false. But yeah, so that's the old way, right? So let's get rid of this. And so the new way is going to be to do Boolean value of, okay? So value of for everything is the same. So um, I guess there's two ways for this one. We could do the string here, or we could do the Boolean. So we could do true here. So true or false, same thing, okay? It's false. And likewise, we could do the string thing, you know, that we did last time. So yeah, that's how we do that. And yeah, so now we have the numeric type wrappers, which are the basic numbers like byte, short, integer, long, float, and double. We have type wrappers for all of those. And uh, yeah, so it's the same thing with these. We have an old way and a new way. So if you want to do, uh, let's do an integer. We could do integer, oops, integer. Oh my gosh, I can't spell it. <laughs> integer, integer one equals new integer and then inside of here we can put a number or a string of a number okay so like we could do the same thing so we'll do like 100 boom and that's how that works or we could do the string of 100 boom same thing okay and then likewise we have the new way which is integer uh wait yeah integer dot value of and then we can put the number in there or the string of the number in there also okay so that's how you do that but if you use the string, it's uh, recommended, I guess, that you use a, um, it's going to throw an exception. So you'd like uh, surround it in, the, in a try statement, I think. So, yeah. So it's going to be a number format exception. So I guess you would do something like this. So try, uh, copy and paste this in here. I guess you don't have to, but yeah, if you want to. So number format exception, there we go. Catch. There we go. So you would usually do that, I guess. And uh, yeah, so that's how you do that. Um, that's for integers, and then we could do it for any of them, any of the other ones. We could do byte, we could double, float, integer, long. You could do it for, it's all the same for each one, except that you're using uh, the, the class for each one. You're not, it's not integer for all of them, obviously, so it's going to be byte, you know, short, you know, whatever you're going to use. So, yeah, you can do any of those. Um, so, those work. I'm not going to show you them all because that's a lot. Okay, so, yeah. So, let's say you want to convert a... Um, it, like an object of a primitive data type back to a prim prim primitive data type. Uh, how to do that? So let's go ahead and make an object of, of a primitive data type real quick. So integer, uh, integer object, that's short for integer object, equals integer dot value of 100. So let's say we want to convert this 100 object into a regular prim primitive data type again. So we can do int i equals and then i object, e I mean dot and then int value. So it's the int value method. Or if you're using like a short, it'd be the short value method or by the byte value method, you know, same thing for each of those. So yeah, that's how you do that. And then what's really cool, um, this kind of shows that they're basically the same thing. If you do i plus um, the object of the primitive data type, they'll both come out as the same thing. So they're basically the same thing. They're both the, uh, the number 100, except one's an object, one's a primitive data type. So yeah. So that's actually it. Um, that's everything. So if you got that down, it's pretty simple. Just use value of. Don't use the old method because that's old. And I just want to say that I changed my. Um, do do. Where is it? But open. What the hell? My crap's not opening. Anyway, the point is I changed my um, Java version to Java 10. So we're updated. Because I was using Java 8 before, but I wanted to demonstrate this, so I switched the 10, so we're up to date, and we can use the new method, value of, okay? So anyway, I know those a lot, but um, yeah, it was pretty simple, probably, um, for you. So if you have any questions about it, don't worry, just ask a question in the comments. If you also have any questions, you can join a Discord that's in the description if you want to join that. Also, leave a like if you liked the video. If you want to see more, subscribe, and I'll be posting videos, like, all the time on many different things, including Java, of course. Um... Yeah, so if you like it, leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more, and peace. I take the pills and I'm having a thrill. Take a prescription's a hell of a feeling. As good as any, I never forget it. Got them big and they call on my phone trying to